Hey, man, listen. I got told the D-line. It's a f***ing opportunity to be out here, man. Don't take a f***ing snap for granted. Let's go. Gang on me, gang on three. One, two, three. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather beaten, he wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold, and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. The Las Vegas Raiders just lost to the Los Angeles Chargers last week. So how are they going to beat the Baltimore Ravens this week? That's a good question, but we can start with not making the same mistakes they made against the Chargers. The quarterback can't just throw the ball backwards behind the line of scrimmage unless someone's there to catch it, and the running back has to hold on to the ball when he runs through contact. Along with the interception that came off a bad at pass, those turnovers were the main things that cost the Raiders the game. But today is about the defense and how they're going to deal with quarterback Lamar Jackson and the Ravens' offense. As far as the defense goes, we could start with them simply getting into their run fits. The Raiders actually did that for the most part. They just made mistakes on three occasions and it cost them a 46-yard run deep into their territory, a 12-yard touchdown run, and a 61-yard run deep into their territory. Otherwise, they had the Chargers offense stopped. Things aren't going to get any easier Sunday against Jackson and company, so they better be on point. Here's what they have to do to have a chance to win this Sunday. The Ravens have Derrick Henry in the backfield now. There will definitely be times that he gets his. They'll definitely give it to him to punch it in close to the goal line. But Ravens head coach John Harbaugh said we didn't bring him here to give him 30 carries a game. Of course not, because they have to give the ball to Lamar Jackson on design runs too. He's a very dynamic player with the ball in his hands, so the Ravens have to use it. He's going to finish this run just like a running back. That's something else when you have a quarterback like that, because it's like giving a running back an extra blocker. And he gets to use a running back like Derrick Henry to hold the linebacker. The Raiders better be ready to break down and tackle because this guy has moves. Watch this. Oh. He has good speed too, so the Raiders can't afford to do things like this. Marcus Sepps is in the box and he gets tangled with one of his defensive alignments so he's not able to get into the big gap there. Then free safety Trayvon Merrick misses the tackle. The Raiders paid big for that. 46 yards, first and goal. But this isn't good either. You can't have one defense player directly behind the other and still have gap integrity. And when you don't have gap integrity, the other team has holes like this to run through. And here's the biggest one. Why is linebacker Divine Diablo taking on a guard that's double teamed with a nose tackle? You gotta take him on with your inside shoulder so you can disengage and scrape if you need to. And why is safety Marcus Sepps charging the line of scrimmage? Those three plays are why the Ravens had 176 yards rushing on the day. If they do this again Sunday, it's gonna be worse. But it doesn't have to be like that. The Raiders can play the run. You know Max Crosby puts his work in. Interior defense lineman Christian Wilkins puts his work in too. Sometimes the two stars put their work in together. Adam Butler puts in his work. Of course, Big John Jenkins puts his in. He shredded a double team to get that tackle. And of course, Robert Spillane puts in his work. 
and I call him Spill Lane instead of Spillane, because when you go into his lane, you get spilled. All right, as far as throwing the ball goes, Jackson can give you dimes every once in a while. He's come a long way as a passer, but he's not going to beat you with just his arm yet. If he could, he would have won the Super Bowl already. He just isn't consistent enough throwing the ball down the field. He almost messed around through an interception here. Here he has a chance to win the game with a touchdown pass. His guy is open and he misses. Then the next down he's going to get a shot at an even more wide open receiver and he miss. That's why I have no real fear of Jackson throwing the ball. I trust the Raiders corners to cover the Ravens receivers too. Along with Nelson Aguilar who I don't have in this video. The Ravens have Rashad Bateman. And second year man Zay Flowers at receiver. So I do trust second year man Jacorion Bennett. Lock corner Nate the Natural Hobbs. And Jack Jones to get it done at the corners. Oh, and I'm expecting a bounce back game from Merrick. That was a big missed opportunity right there. What has me shaking in my boots is Lamar Jackson scrambling, where he often turns the passing game into part of the running game. It is not so easy to get him on the ground. And he has the speed to eat up yards before you even get to him. There's a holding call on this play, but it just goes to show you what happens if you don't disengage from your blocks. The Raiders will pay just like they did last week. I mean, this dude is this way and that way. All right, let me get out of his way and oh, let me get out of here. Find an open man on the run too. Here he finds the check down. And here he has to flip it to him right quick again. And here's a dime on the run. This is a hell of a play and throw here. Oh. And oh. And we have a touchdown, folks. The Raiders need to do the same thing they did with the Chargers last week. Maintain your rush lanes while bringing pressure right to his face. Here they have Contain on the edges while they bring Max Crosby up the middle on the stunt. Here the only gap the Raiders leave is the one Hobbs comes through free. Herbert completes the pass here but I'll take that from Jackson. Make Jackson make throws like that consistently. Again, nowhere to go, has to check it down. Turn Jackson into a pocket passer and you have a shot. If he was consistent from the pocket, he'd have a couple of rings. Now this here is what you can't let happen. You gotta contain when Crosby comes on this stunt. 
Herbert can run a little bit, but it would have been much worse if that was Jackson. I say we do what the Chiefs started to do. Have a spy in there. That makes things a little harder. Diablo with his speed should be the Raider spy. It's a good chance for him to redeem himself from last week too. When you have a spy in there, the middle is taken away. Here's gonna get him outside because he's Lamar Jackson, but I don't think he gets Divine Diablo with all his speed like that. And hey, sometimes when you're spying around the line of scrimmage, you get a chance to bat one down. For the Raider defense to even have a chance to keep the Raiders in the game in Baltimore, the first thing they have to do is eliminate all those mistakes. If you think the Chargers made them pay for those mistakes, what do you see what the Ravens do to them? We're talking about Derrick Henry, who's led the league in rushing multiple times, and Lamar Jackson, who makes defenders that are trying to tackle him look very silly on a regular basis. I'm not worried about Jackson killing the Raiders from the pocket. Jackson is still not proven to be a pocket killer. The Raider corners can cover the Ravens receivers. And the Raiders play the run well when they're not making those mistakes, so hopefully they can clean them up and let's see what happens. Thank you for watching. See you next time.